distinguished speakers, National Security Advisor, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. And a very good morning to you and a very happy Noros to all our friends. Uh, I hope this is a very auspicious start of spring and we can celebrate it together. My profound gratitude to the hosts, the National Security Division, and the Center for Global and Strategic Studies, Islamabad, for affording me this opportunity to speak in this important seminar. I join my colleagues in extending a warm welcome to all our revered guests from Central Asia. This seminar has been aptly themed to reflect Pakistan's role in the emerging scheme of things. At a time of flux in the global balance of power, at a time when grand projects of regional integration are finally taking shape and taking off, even as old geopolitical challenges persist and new ones emerge, this conference today will help us take stock. I agree with the earlier speaker who said that Pakistan is a land of opportunity for the Central Asian republics. So is other Central Asian republics, a la lands of opportunity for Pakistan and all who live in this uh, side of, on the south of the Central Asian republics. Pakistan has very strong connections with Central Asia. The bonds of kinship, of culture, and civilization, of commerce, and communion have not, have not only enmeshed us into a rich and abiding tapestry of relations, they have also shaped us into who we are today. The end of the Cold War brought with it great hopes and expectations. We felt that with the emergence of the independent Central Asian republics, that have, with whom we had severed civilizational links will be restored and that a new era of regional integration would open on us. Pakistan rushed to embrace its brethren and sisters from the Central Asian republics. It was amongst the first, Pakistan was amongst the first to accord recognition to the Central Asian republics, establishing diplomatic relations and forging air links. Last year we celebrated diplomatic, 25 years of the establishment of diplomatic relations with the Central Asian Republics. Following that, the Economic Cooperation Organization founded by Iran, Pakistan, and Turkey was expanded to include the Central Asian Republics and Afghanistan, and a grand scheme such as TAPI was drawn up. The defining principle of our foreign policy with regard to the Central Asian Republics is peace for development. The main thrust of our engagement is trade, investment, energy, connectivity, and culture. A common culture that we share, we respect, and we want to promote in both the Central Asian Republics and in Pakistan. Almost three decades since results have been mixed. Heady expectations have been tempered by sobering geopolitical realities. 30 years on regional integration is work in progress. While the prospects remain bright and the fundamental logic of connectivity is sound, strong headwinds have hampered our collective efforts. The region has been at the center of currents and cross-currents of international geopolitics, in many ways a victim of history and circumstances. We need to overcome these circumstances. Five interrelated factors have been at play. Firstly, the changes in global power from dynamics, the Cold War, the post-Cold War unipolar world, the global war on terror, and now the emerging multipolar world have been pulling the region and its component nations in different directions at different times. But we are coming together now. Instability in Afghanistan is a direct con consequence of great power rivalry. Afghanistan was a theater where the last battle of the Cold War was fought. It was a war that scarred Afghanistan and with it Pakistan deeply. It turned Afghanistan into an economy, into a war economy. It, would, it gifted us weapons, drugs, and refugees. Secondly, the persistent threat in the midst of terrorism and extremism. These phenomena are not indigenous to our region, but have, been, have had a profound impact on our societies. They are a direct product of the Cold War. The, the Afghan war and the abandonment of Afghanistan by the developed world in the aftermath of uh, the, the Soviet withdrawal. Thirdly, the emergence of transnational organized networks, drug smugglers, and human traffickers <clears throat> that have a vested interest and the wherewithal to foment instability. 
Fourthly, the persistence of interstate disputes and disagreements that have hampered meaningful cooperation. In South Asia, the long-standing dispute of Kashmir and India's refusal to seek a peaceful resolution through dialogue poses the greatest hurdle to meaningful integration. Finally, unhelpful, unhelpful aspirations of certain countries that have used the region as a chessboard for gaining influence at the expense of regional states to play blame and shame games to act as spoilers. But we will overcome all of this. Ladies and gentlemen, daunting as these challenges may be, a moment of opportunity is also upon us. The peaceful rise of China has created the right conditions to construct the modern Silk Route in a world where international consensus is fraying, creating a global community of shared interests is a dream well worth pursuing. China's One Belt, One Road initiative offers a ray of hope for countries of the region to set aside differences and work together with a single-minded objective of realizing mutually beneficial development through greater trade and stronger connectivity. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, on which the Interior Minister and Planning Minister has already uh, dilated at de in detail. The flagship project of Obor is well underway. Our deep-sea port of Gawadar and the linking highways will not only connect China with the Gulf, but will also afford our Central Asian brothers the shortest route possible to the sea. We welcome you to this. Today, the dream is closer to reality than ever before. Ladies and gentlemen, Pakistan remains committed to support every constructive initiative that integrates and aligns the region more closely, helps build consensus on key issues, and promotes win-win cooperative, collaborative ventures. This is what has informed our membership of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the marked improvement and continued upward momentum in our relations with the Russian Federation. This is the motivator behind our consistent efforts to reach out to our Central Asian brothers and full, further solidify our relations with them, both individually and collectively. We celebrated in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs the 25th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations. And it was amazing that the colors and the culture were so common amongst all our countries that it was a pleasure being a part of this event. This is also what has driven our unwavering support for projects such as TAPI Casa and Casa 1000. Last year, Pakistan had the great honor of hosting the 13th ECO Summit, which was a resounding success. Its overarching theme of connectivity was endorsed by all member states. The summit adopted the Islamabad Declaration and Vision 2025, the blueprints for comprehensive regional cooperation for the years ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, perhaps no other country has been as adversely affected by the conflict in Afghanistan as Pakistan. A stable Afghanistan is vital for Pakistan to realize its true potential. A stable Afghanistan is also vital for the Central Asian Republics and for connectivity to be established between the our countries within the region. We strongly believe that the path to peace is through dialogue and reconciliation. No more, not more war, more death, and more destruction. In short, if 17 years of unrelenting conflict has taught us anything, it is that there is no military solution. That is why we have wholeheartedly welcomed President Ghani's offer of reconciliation. The U.S. presence in Afghanistan has also turned it virtually into a neighbor. Pakistan and U.S. are long-standing allies and friends. We have policy differences in Afghan. We may have policy differences in Afghanistan, but share the same end objective, i.e., peace and stability in Afghanistan. And therefore, we remain constructively engaged. Pakistan has always advocated a regional approach that seeks regional solution to regional problems. Through the Moscow format, the Heart of Asia process, the SEO contact group, among others, we remain in touch with our allies and partners. We welcome the, the proposed uh, the meeting that is going to be held in Tashkan on Afghanistan uh, in a couple of days. Together with China, we have forged a trilateral framework with Afghanistan aimed at exploring beneficial projects of connectivity 
on the bilateral plane we have shared with Afghanistan an action plan for solidarity. It has our considered opinion that economic integration of our two countries will work to the benefit of both our countries. Like Central Asia, South Asia too has great prospects, but remains minimally integrated. We have high hopes for SARC, for SARC which has drawn up ambi ambitious plans for regional connectivity. We continue to hold the hope that India will one day see the merit and dialogue and peaceful resolution of the Kashmir dispute in accordance with UN Security Council resolutions and the aspirations of the Kashmiri people. And that one day we'll be able to extend our east-west and north-south corridors to South Asia and beyond. Excellencies, it is my strong conviction that this page of history has turned the age of great games of intrigues and counter intrigues is over. And a new age of great gains is upon us. It falls to us, to our collective wills and collective imaginations on how quickly and how best we can capitalize on these opportunities that are being offered. I wish this seminar and all its participants all success. And I thank you very much for this opportunity to speak today. Thank you.